Hello and welcome to this session of Facebook Live. We are at Raisina Dialogue and I have with me a very interesting guest, uh, Preeti Upala. She is CEO of Omnia, which is a company based in Australia, but she lives and works in Los Angeles. Preeti was crowned Miss India Universe and from there she has moved to technology and from technology to dharma. How did that yes. transformation happen? Namaste Kanchan, honored to be here. Uh, ultimately, it's what we're talking about, which is dharma. You know, I am such a firm believer that your uh, peace, purpose and happiness will not be achieved unless you're doing what you're truly meant to be doing in life. And I had that sort of journey where I transitioned from uh, what I thought was my, my thing in life to what I really discovered was my gift to the world. So moving from corporate to um, ultimately to Hollywood and now to more spiritual and philosophical based projects. It's been a, a real journey but I've learned, I've grown and I've realized, you know, I've sort of understood what true um, fulfillment means and dharma is very much a part of all of that. But that still doesn't explain <laughs> how did the shift happen. I had a um, sort of a spiritual awakening quite early in my life and I'm grateful. I think the awakening that some people or the realization that some people have at 50 or 60, uh, because when I visited ashrams around the world, I would see people maybe three times my age having these incredible experiences finding out about who they are and why they're here in the world. I had that at a very, very young age in my early 20s. I think it happened so that I could quickly get onto the right path ASAP and do what I came here to do. So I was, you know, in banking and corporate. I wasn't happy. I was doing, I was in a very lucrative role, traveling around the world, making tons of money, but deeply unfulfilled, deeply lost, very unhappy. And I just had this um, experience once uh, when somebody sort of uh, asked me if I had ever meditated before and I said no and I was uh, you know kind of uh, given the opportunity to do that and that sort of kicked it off because I started listening to my inner voice my inner self and also I was so unhappy with what was going on corporate uh, wise because I knew that there was more to my life than what I had been doing but I just didn't know what it was so it all sort of unfolded through so the So what we are what we are supposed to be talking yes. about is uh, dharma in yes. the digital age. Yes. So how do you how do you sort of uh, take technology and you take dharma and you fuse them together uh, people say that science technology is antithetical yes. to everything that is spiritual. It shouldn't be and it's not depending on which way you look at it. So we live in incredibly uh, intense and dramatic times, right? On the one hand, uh, the world has shrunk to a global village. We're more connected than ever before, thanks to technology. But then on the other hand, we are more disconnected among ourselves. We are more isolated, we're more insular. So, um, and you know, when I look at the digital age, the real question is what problems has the digital age bought for us? And the biggest problem is the digital divide because as many people as they are that are connected and that do use technology as an asset, there are a ton that don't and that's the group of the haves and the have nots. So our big question is how do we transition from the digital divide to the digital dividend? But back to your question on how does it all come together, um, I don't think that technology is a uh, obstacle in connecting with yourself. Certainly when I look at the perspective from Sanatana Dharma, which is sort of my faith, uh, I think it sort of beautifully ties in because this is... So what is so unique about Sanatan Dharma that it fuses seamlessly with technology? That is a very, very good question. Uh, it's eternal and timeless, so it's as relevant today as it ever was. But there are some very specific points that I want to touch on, which, uh, you know, in practical sense. So number one, uh, it uses iconography a lot. You know, it's all about symbols and symbolism, uh, to put it in a very practical sense. And so does the internet and the digital age. 
So this makes it very easy to sort of cope with technology. You know, yeah, it, it doesn't. Uh, why would it make Sanatan Dharma unique? Well, it's it's th that's not the case with. Uh, firstly, I don't see it as a religion. I don't see Hinduism as a religion. It's really a civilization. And then more precisely, it's a knowledge system or a set of tradition. And this is a set of tradition that's about relentlessly seeking um, the pursuit of the truth, you know, and how do we live uh, with each other uh, in harmony with ourselves, the universal consciousness. No, Sanatan Dharma means the eternal that path, which is yes. eternal. Yeah, and absolutely. But I'm saying what it entails. Uh, but you know, and it's it's decentralized. You know, there it doesn't have the set rules as when you look at monotheistic Abrahamic uh, sort of organized religion. So I'm making a distinction between Abrahamic paths and Indic ways of thought, um, and that's where the whole symbolism comes in. That's one reason I would say. But um, I mean, it's uh, just the, the the pursuit of truth itself and sort of being in complete harmony. Uh, yeah. Give me one example of the work which you do that brings together technology and dharma. Well, you know, in very practical sense, you know, whether it's a meditation app, whether it's an online yoga tutorial, or listening to uh, specific verses, if you like. But uh, all that yeah. has been done before. What is so new about no, it? No, what I'm, uh, what the point I'm trying to make is that technology is not a barrier especially when you look at sort of these uh, ways of uh, getting in touch deeper with yourself and getting to know uh, more in touch with also the truth. Yeah. So are you, are you arguing the case that you can be a dharmic yes. as well as a technologist? Uh, yes. And uh, you know, on, uh, the other point is because you know, Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma is decentralized it, uh, just like the internet age, uh, and, and just like the internet itself, right? So there are no set rules, and there is no sort of localized destination. It's all pervasive in that way. It permeates through the sort of the fiber of our being and the sort of fiber of our society in a way. So all of the, these are just uh, mindsets, but it all leads into a way of thinking w that lends itself to this technological era that we live in. So it's like sort of a very specific... Before we went live, you were telling me how uh, technology can be made into a dharmic asset. Uh, what, uh, how does or how can technology become a dharmic asset? Well, the, j just like the earlier example, with I know, like you mentioned, yes, this has been done. But the point that it has been done, and it only keeps getting, um, you know, more and more innovative. You know, whether it's apps or using online tutorials or tuning in, it th none of this impedes on the real pursuit of truth. And that's the, you know, I mean, it sort of all ties in. And in this sort of crazy world, you can do that for yourself. And it's a it's not sort of the foo-foo spirituality that you find in the West. It's an honest, sincere seeking. And it's a, a, a genuine pursuit and a genuine experience that one can have. And it, just the mindset and all of the other qualities of it lend itself to technological sort of era where it's not an obstacle. It's a tool, you know, as it, as I mean, technology is a tool, and even in the spiritual sense, it is. So in your interactions with people to whom you speak, to whom you reach out to, or to whom you give tutorials, uh, what is the feedback? I mean, how, how comfortable are they using technology for dharmic purposes? Very comfortable. You know, in some don't have a choice, especially when you're uh, connecting with people from all around the world, you know, in all different time zones and so on. But in a very more intimate sense, they do feel a connect. I think if if the sincerity is there on both uh, parts or both from both parties, you can, you know, we are sitting here together having this amazing exchange. Uh, if we are equally honest with ourselves, it could also be done, you know, via a tool. So it it's the the the, the, the the app or the interface is just there as a tool, nothing more than that. The sincerity needs to come from within, uh, which is the ultimate truth anyway. So no, it's been very good feedback. <coughs> so if I were to give you 
uh, tell you about music. Uh, when you listen to a live concert, that is one kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a time when you listened to music on a long playing record. That was a different kind of experience. Then you had those uh, cassette players and that was yet another kind of experience and finally, you had compact discs mm -hmm. and now you just download and listen to digital music. Click it, yeah. But does not quite compare to listening to a live concert. Now, if I were to use that corollary over here, on dharmic issues, why would people want to listen to an app mm -hmm. or watch a video instead of listening to a spiritual guru or uh, listening to a person? Because when you're because them. when you're when you're in Los Angeles, California, and the guru happens to be in India, southern India, you don't always get the opportunity to teleport well, yourself you have local immediately. Gurus also. No, you do, but if there is a particular one that you're, I mean, let's not get into the guru business. There's there are real gurus, and then there's the the, the so-called gurus as well. But if there is someone that you really connect with, and they happen to be in another part of the so world, you, you, you don't you always aspire to be a tech guru. No, no, I'm just uh, talking about uh, how technology doesn't necessarily need to impede your spiritual process, which it does not. And I was using my own personal uh, examples uh, to prove that. But I think, and I mean, I think some of these videos, and we have seen, you know, Sadhguru and so many others, they are immensely popular. And it all started from uh, his sort of uh, uh, online outreach, so to speak. And then, of course, you do make that trip. You do see, you do get the uh, physical darshan as well. And then you can always go back home and continue the process. I think it's sort of, uh, you know, they're all different pieces of a puzzle. If I were to come back to your own life experiences, why is there a sudden craving for spirituality, especially among the technological uh, the people who are involved with technology, with science, there seems to be an increasing urge yes. to seek out some sort of a spiritual uh, shelter, if I may use that word. That is a very good point and we are seeing it all uh, pervasive, especially when you think about Silicon Valley and California and so on. And all, I would even add Hollywood to that group. So, it is not just the techie people, it is also these, these actor entertainment no, types, you know. I, I would, I would talk, I, I think we could just briefly talk yeah, about talk, people who are involved in, in with science world. and technology. Yeah, so two reasons. One is I think with the, we are realizing every day that in this material sort of uh, fast paced tech world that we live in, that simply does not cut it. Because the only thing important is your, uh, how you feel about yourself, you know, your own personal fulfillment, your fulfilling your dharma and ultimately of course moksha, which is liberation of your soul and your ego. Uh, so, uh, people are really waking up to that reality around the world and this is a beautiful thing. I've, this is a So, would you shift. suggest that reason is now taking a back seat? Well, reason is… Because I, science is about reason and dharma is about faith. So, the, I, I said there were two points. So, one is people are just increasingly becoming frustrated with the mundane and the material and they want more. That is one thing. The second is, I think there is a shift away from sort of dogmatic or organized religion and uh, a move towards more philosophical, whether it is spiritual, whether it is dharmic, Indic faith, there are several of them. And this group of spiritual but not religious group is enormous around the world. And these are the folks that are really craving for something more and they do not discard science. They are, in fact, the new atheists are, they marry Region, uh, reason, logic, and science with uh, aspects of spirituality. They don't sort of shun it all away. So I'm there sorry, Preeti. We, we are we are it. we are <laughs> running out of time. It was it was a delight listening to you, and I'm sure our viewers also enjoyed. Uh, we'll meet again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank so you, much. everybody, for watching Facebook Live from Rai Singh Dialogue.